All right, everybody, we're live. So I'm gonna wait for a few people to jump on. I'm gonna start out this video kind of going through the Jeep here and everything that's going on with it at the moment. We did update last week and uh, now it's time to fill you in what's happened since then. Um, and then we'll do some questions and all that once more of you get on. So uh, give it a minute here and we will start doing our walk around on everything that's been done. Um, for those who have seen some of the things already, uh, this is just kind of a, uh, a go over on what you've probably seen on other social medias or whatever, but now we'll update YouTube. So everything on the Jeep is basically done other than I have one little uh, tie rod ball joint to replace for the steering linkage um, that I'm gonna do at my house probably this weekend. Um, but audio wise, she's pretty much done. Uh, everything other than a car wash uh, has been pretty much taken care of too. So the interior, I just got it done uh, with detailing. So it's very clean. And uh, I have this Gatorade bottle that's making it not so clean. Uh, so now that a few of you are on here, let's start doing a tour of the build. Uh, I'm gonna show you the guys all the ins and outs of it. I have enough battery on my phone right now to hopefully uh, give you guys a good 40 minutes or so. So uh, we'll start up front. So uh, I'm just gonna go over things like just as they come to me. Um, we got the uh, Jeep pretty much restored at this point. New paint and such. Obviously it needs a wash. We got LED lights, we got all the things. Uh, it has a uh, aluminum grill, I mean aluminum radiator. Uh, that's a three core. And uh, also the external uh, transmission cooler. We also have the triple electric fan set up. Uh, I kind of ended up needing this because of how hard these alternators pull on it. Um, I didn't want a clutch fan anymore and I'm really liking the electrics. They keep up more than well enough on hot days. I never get over 200 degrees. I can be trucking uphill or anything. Uh, so that's kind of the uh, cooling system. We got this uh, kind of hot air intake thing going on. Uh, Jeep 4.0 liter, uh, original, never been touched. Heads, head gaskets original, never been gone through. We have some upgraded uh, injectors, uh, four hole, uh, more of a modern setup. So that's kind of the engine, what's going on. That's the, uh, was driving everything so it's about 190 horse uh, from factory or about 180 horse I believe um, so it's not the HO model anyway um, now getting on the audio stuff this is our top alternator that everybody probably knows about this is a 370 from JS alternators they have their beautiful pulley on there that I think I scratched and we also have a 240 tucked down below in the stock location. If we jump under the car here, you can get a good view of it. So uh, there's that guy. Got pretty good belt wrap on that one. So that's what's uh, charging everything. We got about 600 amps of charging going into the system. And we went to, I think this, these were uh, Toolmaker dual inputs for the alternators. So we have those on each of the alternators. There's one down there as well. And this is all OFC wire that's running from those. Um, in order to do the alternator, I had to do a little bit of custom fabrication. Everybody asked me about it. It's just, it wasn't that hard. I just put little feet on these on, uh, and it worked out pretty good. Um, and I updated the uh, AC heater hose here or for the transmission, or for, man, I'm losing it. For the radiator, the radiator hose, the upper hose, uh, is for the AC equipped cars. This vehicle is never equipped with AC. Everybody says, man, you got rid of your AC. I'm like, there was nothing to get rid of. So it wasn't too hard. So uh, that's kind of what's driving uh, electrical from the engine side. Um, now we're getting on the batteries here. Uh, the entire build's equipped at the full throttles. This is a group 34 and we have 31s in the back. You'll see later. Uh, we have the Sky High 8 spot uh, terminals here with all my custom Jeep and base slugs and heat shrinks and all that. Um, so we kind of did a flow stack effect here to kind of utilize the, 
the space and the look of it. And I was unable to get a ground on this slug because the, uh, the hood closes right here really close on this guy. So we we're pretty tight, but it's working. And I'm able to run all my power runs through the SMD four spot fuse holder here. And this is for uh, accessories in the vehicle. We got it on acrylic little cover plate here to kind of cover up all the factory things like the coil and all that. They kind of hide in there. And then we got our power runs and they run down through the firewall. And then our ground's going under the vehicle. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Loving these alternators. Um, other thing with the Jeep, it's still 4x4. Four four. It's totally able to go off-road if I ever actually wanted. I don't really have the need, um, but it's functioning, so I can pop it in four-wheel drive anytime I need, and that still goes. So uh, if I, the only time I think that's ever going to be necessary with this vehicle anymore, since I don't off-road with it, is potentially if I'm going uh, to Reno or Vegas or something, and I have to get over the hill, and we got snow. Uh, if you're four by four equipped, a lot of times they let you go over with no chains. So uh, I keep it working for that purpose. You know, gas mileage is what it is. I get about 17 MPG uh, with this guy on the freeway, so it's not terrible considering. This is our interior. I think you guys might have just got an interruption there. I got a phone call. Um, so we're back. Um, so this is the interior, and you guys have probably seen these doors, so I'll go over them one more time. Um, so this is kind of your view of the thickness. These are about four layers. A one inch birch. Magnetic removable covers here. And I have in recent times, thanks to Bobby Gately, switched over to Audio Dynamics. And I swear by these guys. And I've been installing only Audio Dynamics in all my customer installs lately. And, uh, these are the 3000 series components and their tweeters are up here and my A pillars. So very nice component set. And we actually turned these into a three way component by adding these three inch cone mids. These are neodymium as well. Uh, these are ferrite, but with pretty large magnet. Um, so really happy with those. They make more base then the doors themselves can handle. I get a lot of like vibrations in the door, even regardless of my sound deadening. Uh, these just find a, a way to buzz. So I have to set the, uh, the uh, crossover so that they're not going crazy, but they do the job. So if you got a better put together vehicle that's not being beat on so much, uh, they should sound better. Uh, these doors just get trashed so fast. As you can see right here, this one happened just today. So I gotta go and do some repairs on that. So that's kind of sucky because it's a new paint job. But uh, the paint place has my has my color, so I can get these get these replaced. Um, on the camera, you're not seeing the color I'm seeing. I don't think uh, it's much more of a saturated gold color in real life, especially when you get in the sun. The metal flake shows up, and I really like it. People asked a lot about. Uh, why I went with this color, but uh, the Jeep was originally near this color and I added a little bit of saturation and metal flick to it. It's the style I, I've always gone with and I couldn't see it being any other color. And I think it's a good looking vehicle if you uh, aren't used to seeing particular colors. It kind of stands out on its own. It's my car, so that's my choice on that one. Anyway, uh, back to the interior here, there's the other door panel. Currently don't have the other pillar in. Um, got that over at Gately Audio. We're uh, replacing a couple tweeters because uh, the silk dome don't seem to be too happy taking SPL. So if I seal up that side on a meter, like a base boxing or something, you got over 160 decibels in that side of the car, and I lost the bottom two tweeters to sound pressure. So uh, that kind of sucked. So we may have to redo these pillars using some uh, different brand of tweeter and we'll go with like a bullet style so that they can take the pressure, which really sucks because I'm going to lose out on some of my audio dynamics clarity that those provide. But uh, if we keep losing them, then we've learned a lesson. So, uh, so that's the mids and highs. We got 
four sets of these, two of these on each door, and then four tweeters that go with these. So it's a pretty nice front stage. Uh, it's not quite as loud as my last setup with the Neo 8s and all that, but uh, they just never sounded good, and these sound really good. Um, I still need to get a processor, so that's something else I, I'm going to do probably uh, this winter uh, to help out the time alignment and stuff. So if we move on the dash here, we got our all our bulbs working, which is rare, <laughs> but they're all working. Uh, we got our voltmeters here. This voltmeter is for uh, up front. This senses pretty much where the alternators are at. This one senses where the batteries are at, um, and you'll notice that there's a bit of discrepancy between these two when I'm playing it. Uh, we also have a redundant voltage meter that's uh, reading the back. Um, this is SMD VM1, and these are on their switches. So there's that. Uh, moving down here, I just added this for a uh, readout of temperature at the amplifiers. This is SMD FM1. So you can see that they're currently at 70 degrees. So we played them a little bit. It's about 50 degrees outside right now. Um, here's our functioning 4x4. Velcroed on uh, remote. That's something I like to do because I usually lose my remote. Uh, up here we kind of put a filler panel in so we have our 12 volt and our USB charging station. So that's all good. Um, I Velcroed on my USB connector for music to the stereo. That's pretty much I primarily use USB uh, functioning heater. So that all works. <clears throat> so we stay nice and warm in here. This is a driver car, so I like to, if I can't have AC, I'm at least have my heater going. Uh, we'll get to the subs next. Um, I normally like to show people this, but it's hard because my seats are broke from all the abuse for a lot of years. I wanna get them replaced and reupholstered. Um, they're supposed to be able to fold forward using this, but no longer works. So I have to come down here and use a flat tip screwdriver and pull back the little lever that holds the seat. If I can do it while holding you guys. There we go. See this little clip guy, you gotta just pull it this way. So that's kind of sucks. And you can see these are just covers. I need to actually get new seats. Um, but this is what I don't get to show a lot of people. Uh, we did this at Bobby Gately's shop, Gately Audio in Sacramento. And we have all these sponsors and brands engraved on this nice piece of acrylic. Kind of a nice offset for the wood here. So uh, there's all that stuff. Pretty cool. And I just put in this trim panel. It's a black carpet panel just to kind of clean it up. That way I have a nice carpet seam there and there's no ugliness at the bottom of my wall. So uh, this is usually a place I can put tools or uh, luggage. You can see there's a little bit of room. So if my girlfriend needs to bring her, her bag or something, because we uh, pretty much just pack up this car and take it. We're going to Vegas in January. It's about nine hours from here. Um, we also have a car carrier on my tow package that I put on to carry uh, spare subs and other things. So now we're in the back. Um, this is pretty much what I've updated. And uh, I'm sure some of you have seen it, but we'll go over all the equipment. So we'll start from the top here. We have two Audio Dynamics 1000.4s. These are the four channels. And these things are beast. Super beast. They're uh, 250 watts by four at two ohms and uh, like 170 at four ohms. So there's tons of power coming out of these things. They're really efficient, super clean. They even uh, have what's called APEC. It's a technology that, we're, that pretty much prevents you from clipping. So as soon as the amp sees clipping, it's gonna throttle itself down a little bit. You don't really audibly hear that, but it uh, does help with distortion. So it's pretty nice. Uh, it doesn't really reduce the volume to where you're like, hey, what's going on? But it subtly just kind of uh, reduces the volume just enough so you avoid clipping and uh, makes for a really nice sounding front stage. Um, so powering those, we have our Sky High Distro Block here. It's running some wire out to our 
SMD fuse holder. This is the big 16 spot and we've used all the spots so I can have the most efficient power coming through that. And I'll run down into some bus bars on our full throttle group 31s. Um, coming from there, we have to power or send signal to our amplifiers. So this is how I send to my three, my 5Ks. Split it with the uh, SBC cock box, as they call it. Um, I got this one from Sky High. And we have our Sky High Premium RCAs going out to our amplifiers. So shout out to them. John always takes good care of me. Uh, moving on to what powers the subs are three DC 5Ks. Um, from DC, obviously. Rusty takes care of me also, big deal. Uh, we have some a surprise coming from him, actually, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But uh, so these are pretty awesome amps, honestly. I, I, uh, I've been used to my 3.5Ks for this whole time, and these are definitely uh, packing way bigger punch. You can see all of our dual inputs and the Jeep and bass heat shrinks on here from... All the sky high OFC wire. I uh, clamped the amplifiers today and I'm getting 5,000 watts out of each one at my peak frequency. So they are doing exactly what they're supposed to do despite box rise. So the electrical is on point and everything works really well. Um, some of the accessories, I think if you guys saw my other live video, you remember that I wire my head unit to the back battery bank to help eliminate some of that engine noise. Uh, so this is the fuse for that. This is a fuse for uh, the switch, which is my fans. The fans essentially pull air from outside, push it in through this vent, which is a speaker grill. And then this one pulls air out to the outside. So I got air coming through. Um, I wanted to locate them a little higher uh, because heat rises, but I was unable to due to the limitations of the room I had behind those trim panels. But uh, it works pretty good. It does bring down the temperature a lot because when I'm driving along and I got this thing shut, there's no ventilation other than that now. So that definitely helps. And then underneath the amps, uh, I have some fans here that are run off the SMD VM1, or I mean uh, FM1. So it will kick those on when necessary. And then I got all the LED lights back here. So that's kind of the back. That's what's going on. It's all OFC wire, all the premium RCAs, so everything's uh, as good as it could be. And, uh, you know, it's not perfect. I might get some wire um, holder things, you know, those little things that will split the wires perfectly and hold them. But right now I just did a zip tie job and uh, it looks okay. So that's the back of the Jeep. Um, we did skip the subs. Currently running six. JVF Customs 3.312s. There they are. Uh, two big ass six inch ports. Uh, this is a six order series band pass, rear tuned at 24, front at 48 hertz. And the Gately Audio Shield port that we went ahead and did at Bobby's shop when I was there. Kind of matches our doors and uh, looks really cool. And there's all those guys obviously wired up with sky high OFC eight gauge. So uh, they're doing pretty good. This one's been scratched up a little bit. It had to come out for repairs last week. Um, but those uh, are rated 2000 Watts a piece and uh, they're taking the five Ks pretty, pretty nicely. As long as I don't clip them too hard, they're getting to their max where I'm, if I'm playing like uh, 25 hertz, they're stretching out pretty good. And uh, we're starting to get some port noise on those rear ports. There's just too much air pushing through them. So uh, that's something we're going to have to do something. Uh, somebody just said it looks like shit. <laughs> wow. So uh, that's the tour of all that stuff. Um, as far as suspension... On the Jeep, we have uh, upgraded leaf springs. We did a bastard pack. So when the thing's empty, it sits pretty high. It's uh, got its own natural lift on it. Um, after everything's in it, it's basically got a two inch lift. And uh, we're running on a set of 31s by 10 and a half. And uh, stock Jeep Wrangler rims from a 98 
that they had painted. So kind of keeps it authentic. The goal with this was to kind of keep it subtle. I don't want to don't want to be flashy, flashy when I'm driving down the road as much. Um, I do need to lube that, but uh, we got power windows. So that's pretty nice. It's a little slow. I'm surprised they continue to work after what I do. But uh, yeah, I can't really think of anything else to go over and I know you guys are probably waiting to hear it or something. I can't play it tonight um, because we're in the shop and I won't do that. And the other reason is it's dark. And the third and most important reason is I don't know how many of you heard about the fires here in Northern California, but I live in Northern California. And uh, within just 50 miles of where I'm at currently um, are the fires. So it's very smoky and they're pretty much saying that it's uh, hazardous to be outside. So we are like almost a 400 on that air quality index. And I think over 300, you're not supposed to be doing anything without masks. So I'm really not really going out there and playing this thing and trying to breathe all that right now. It, it's so bad out there. I thought it was fog this morning when I woke up and it is just smoke. So uh, we'll pray for all those people out there that have lost their homes. I know there's a lot going on. Uh, it's crazy. And uh, I've, my school's postponed class for two weeks, so I don't know what's going on with that, if, we're gonna, if I'm going to be able to get done with this semester on time or what. But uh, that's what's going on, and that's why we're not going to play this tonight. And uh, I keep talking about we're going to play this, but I haven't had a good chance to get out. So... Um, my school, by the way, is only, it was within two miles of being burned. It was in, it's on the opposite side of Chico from where the burn's happening. And Chico was within miles, or within a mile of being burned. They evacuated the entire east side of Chico. So I don't currently live in Chico anymore. Um, but I'm there every single day for school. And now I'm not because of that. Um, luckily I'm out here farther away and I'm safe. But this smoke is just insane so we'll have to postpone that a little longer guys i just i just wanted to show you where we're at on this thing so there's the jeep um i don't really know what else to talk about um i think somebody was asking about the amps they're still wired at 0.35 each um, i'll start answering your questions here in a second i'm just kind of going over the whole checklist on the jeep um, i mean there's other little things on this like tint and all that that i didn't really talk about but you can see uh, nothing crazy. Uh, we're in California, so they get really mad about the tent on these doors. Um, so I couldn't go crazy. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at. Um, we've got the Civic in here. Some of you have seen it. It is very dirty. So you want to talk about fire. This is ash. That's ash. That's not dirt. That's ash. And uh, a lot of it's blown off since I've driven the car, but I washed this about a week and a half ago, and this was just since the fire. Um, you know, and then you get your morning dew, and it kind of makes it look funny. Um, you know, it's just my daily driver. This thing's kind of a crappy car that I got cheap, and I run cheap, and I drive a lot. I drive like 600 miles a week on average because of the places I need to be. I'm constantly going all over the place. So... Uh, for those of you who haven't seen much of this car for a very long time, uh, I did get a double DIN put in. We got a Pioneer. Oh, speaking of which, I don't think I showed you guys the stereo I have in the Jeep, but it's just a single DIN, 8800 series Pioneer. But anyway, uh, this is my double DIN. And in the Civic here, I'm going to pop this off. And I hate doing this because I can never get it back on, but since we're showing you guys, this is an upside down Audio Dynamics 4000 series. Um, component and we have the uh, tweeter up here temporarily in these little pods I'm gonna make pillars um, but this is the 4000 series this is the highest grade series you can get from Audio Dynamics and I decided to have them for my front stage in the Civic because the Civic has always sounded really nice and then uh, since I drive it so often I wanted to have the best front stage so we did that and it sounds phenomenal and uh, if we go to the back of the Civic real quick. Uh, it's a very ugly trunk. 
because I was doing random things and I haven't decided what I'm doing yet. But uh, yeah, as you guys remember, this was my SPL build last year and it, it's been through hell and it's very abused. So uh, it was a 155 decibel car sealed, 158 decibels kick or something like that out of the trunk with 215s. Um, so it's been through the ringer a little bit. But uh, currently, uh, we were experimenting with putting like a floor in here and I was going to do some stuff. I haven't quite gotten that figured out. Um, but we have our 3.5K out of the Jeep. This is the oldest one I've, have, I've had since forever. Um, so now it's in the Honda. Uh, it's wired up, ready for anything I drop in. I had a uh, kicker in here for a while and I finally blew it. Uh, it is a big amp, so... <laughs> Um, so currently baseless in the Civic, but uh, driving those audio dynamics up front is another audio dynamics four channel here. And then the uh, back six by nines are the 2000 series six by nines from them. And these kick ass too. Um, you practically sometimes think you have a sub in here uh, just because the acoustics of this trunk and how well these drivers work. Um, so that's pretty much what's going on. I got just a four speaker system in here running on this amp, and this amp drives them plenty. I can crank it all the way up and never have an issue. Um, and we just got some SMG fuse holders and the sinks mounted to the side. And this is some remnants of my uh, my SPL days in the car where I spray foamed a lot. So it's gonna get a cover panel. I'm gonna be doing an upholstery interior in the trunk, kind of clean it up as soon as we get the, uh, the sub arrangement figured out. So the reason why I'm showing you guys this right now, so unfinished, is because we are working on, Bobby Gately and I are working on, well, mostly Bobby, I just help, these production boxes. And if you guys pay close attention, um, you're the first ones to really know about this. And I don't know if he'll get mad at me or not, but the word will come out. Um, these are like production, like these are gonna be mass produced and we're gonna see how well they sell. And the first people who are gonna have access to these will be Sky High Cardio. So if you guys want really cool boxes, Sky High Cardio. This is one we plucked off of the assembly. Um, these are done with CNC machine and then we hand, we hand send them, hand radius, all the edges and um, assemble. So uh, you can see this one's not finished. Uh, it's because we're using it for testing. Um, but this is just an example of his smallest box available. And uh, I will have pricing on these too, so they might eventually make it on the website um, for me to sell, but Sky High Cardio is gonna have the first batch. So if you guys want a cool box, these are, uh, I wouldn't call these um, prefabs. These are definitely nicer than that. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the wood here. This is the material we're using. You can see that is really good stuff. One inch Baltic birch. Look at the layering on that, if it would focus. That's really nice wood. So this is what we're using. This stuff is like $100 a sheet. So it's top quality material, top quality assembly, kerf port. It's gonna be standard on all these. Um, I hand sanded this one before assembling it. Normally they get stained as well before assemble. Um, and they also come with copper terminals. This is real copper in the Gately Shield. So uh, you're ready to go as soon as you receive the box. These will be shipped and uh, they will be available at Sky High Cardio. This one is obviously not done because we're testing it. So what I'm gonna do is it's going in the Civic. And uh, obviously I have to finish building the floor you can see that is a small box. You could fit that in pretty much any vehicle and have a lot of fun with it. He, uh, he's gonna have other sizes. We have dual 12s, we have dual 15s, we have single 12s, single 10s, uh, two 6.5s. He's got all the sizes. So we're gonna have a whole list of boxes and uh, they'll be available. And the first batch are gonna be a single color. They're gonna be like a black stain and uh, They'll be really cool. So keep an eye out for Sky High Cardio. They're gonna announce that. John's gonna post it all over the place when it happens. We are currently building the boxes. I literally was helping him the other day. Um, we put together like 20 of them. He's got an order of 60 enclosures. If you guys don't think 60 is a big number, think about how long it takes to build a single enclosure. 
and then times that by 60. So we are working our tails off. We worked, like, he's been putting in, like, 15-hour days. I worked, for like, 11 hours the other day. And uh, we're going to get some of this sent off to Sky High and see how they sell. And if it becomes a thing and you guys end up liking the boxes, then that's going to be awesome. My job right now is to test this box and beat the living crap out of it until something happens, which I doubt what anything is going to happen. But... Uh, I'm just going to be on this box, and we just want to see what happens. And you guys can't tell, but these are, uh, they have rabbit joints in there. The um, I forget the term right now. The rabbit and dado joints. So if you can look that up, you'll see how these actual snap together. These, uh, these aren't just cut pieces that you glue. They actually have joints that uh, connect and uh, interlock. So they're uh, very strong, considering... And then obviously no external screws or anything. So they're gonna be really really a, a showpiece for your vehicle and for your build. And uh, you know, so that is kind of something we've been working on. Uh, mostly Bobby, I'm just kind of been helping out, um, kind of paying off what I did with the Jeep with him. Um, but I wanted to share that with you guys. You're the first to know out of anyone uh, other than who we've told here. Um, so these will be cool, and you'll be able to get these. So what's the significance of me having this? Well, number one, I get based in my Civic. Number two, uh, you guys can look forward to a series of videos I'm going to do with this box. And uh, I'm going to do some testing on the box itself, and we'll show you guys what the box can do. And we'll also do some videos on different orientations in the trunk, like uh, what's louder? Is it facing backwards, facing forwards? How do you gain on the meter? I'm going to be able to do all these videos for you guys here in the next few weeks and uh, we'll really get some cool content up. Um, we'll also uh, do some testing between is it louder to be regular mounted or inverted on a box like this and what are the pros and cons and what changes when you invert a sub because I know that's very commonly asked. Um, and the great part is we have a cool box, we have a really big amplifier, we have pretty decent electrical and uh, a lot of trunk space. So there's gonna be a lot we can go through and show you guys uh, concerning this. And the biggest thing is going to be the sub that I get for this. I've already ordered it. Um, DC Audio, Rusty over at DC, um, pretty much ended up providing the sub at a really reasonable cost um, for everyone to be able to enjoy some videos and see the results of a really badass woofer, and I don't even know if I should tell you guys. Um, should I tell you guys? I don't know. You, you tell me. But just think, it's the biggest, baddest 10 DC will, uh, will sell, so um, tell us what you think. Should I, should I reveal the sub yet, or should I wait till I get it? I don't know. But uh, at any rate, the sub's barely even going to fit in this box, I think, but it, we'll make it go. And uh, we're going to use that sub to beat on this box and get some scores and show you guys some different things. And uh, once I've kind of gone through this box and decided that we've, we've proven it um, or disproved it, I mean, this is our first batch of boxes, um, then I might do some other enclosure styles and we'll continue playing with the sub. Um, in later videos. So sounds like some of you want to know what the sub is and I'm super hesitant to say because um, I'm, I kind of want to surprise everybody because I don't think saying it is as cool as seeing it. This thing is going to be absolutely bonkers. I mean, it's going to be way too much 10 for a 10. Uh, so, but you guys want to see, you want to hear what it is. So you're going to be like, well, that's not a big deal when I say it, but uh, wait till you guys see it. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a DC Audio XL10. The XL is a 2200-watt RMS sub, the biggest 10 offered. The uh, motor is basically the size of the woofer, um, so the motor is slightly uh, bigger than my 12s motor. And uh, it's the new M4 style, so it's got all the bump front and back plates, and the boot looks really nice. And on top of that, this subwoofer has tons of options. We're doing carbon fiber on it. We're doing the um, AR cone and surround. We're doing uh, direct leads. We're doing SPL former. Uh, 
pretty much every option I could get on that sub, every single option possible on an XL10, which is the beefiest, baddest sub you can get from DC. And we decided to do that for this. Um, and that sub is like a $600 sub or so with all those options. So um, it's gonna be very, very crazy. And I'm gonna be able to drive it very well with that three and a half K. Um, it's a dual 1.4. So uh, by itself, I can wire it down to 0.7 and drive it pretty good with that three and a half K and uh, later get two of them and be able to wire it 0.35 on this three and a half K uh, if I want. So uh, the, uh, yeah, the question for this box is, is it big enough? And mm, our original goal wasn't to design a box like this for that sub, which is partly why we're gonna end up doing some playing around with inverting it. It will fit, barely. It's like almost touching that back port, um, but we're gonna still send it. And uh, we might even grab another uh, lower end 10 to kind of give more of a fair comparison to what we wanted this box for. Uh, for the average consumer, if you're buying this box, you're probably putting something equivalent to like a level three, which would be like a Fosgate P1 or P2 or something like that, or a uh, Sundown SA. Those are all kind of like along the lines of subs that you might end up putting in something like this, um, you know, like a thousand watt sub instead of a big beastly crazy one but nonetheless i wanted to go all out with the sub choice and dc totally was willing to help me out and uh, rusty was totally cool and we went ahead and did it so that should be here in the next couple of days and uh, we're going to do a demonstration video on that sub and just show that sub off because that sub's going to be awesome um will the spl design be able to demo for an hour without break from the heat um the XL10 should just be able to just take it all day. That's my theory, um, especially when tuning this amp right. Um, that reminds me of something, you guys, uh, that I, I was going to tell you, and I didn't get around to it yet. But since some of you are still here, um, I don't think as many people are excited about the box as the Jeep, but it's okay. Um, I uh, visited Steve Mead the other day at his shop, um, to pick up some things, and um, he is a really cool guy, and you guys don't even realize. I don't know who does and doesn't like Steve Mead, but um, I think the guy's awesome. I had bought the DD1 uh, from Sky High Cardio. I bought it with an order a while back, and I've been using this thing a lot. I like it. I, told, I was talking to Steve, and I'm like, man, I got this DD1, and I love it, um, I'm thinking about getting a CC1 next and, and continuing to add to my tool collection. And Steve looks at me and says, what do you mean you have to go get one? And I said, well, I got to go buy one. He walked over to his stack and grabbed this and said, Merry Christmas to me. Gave the thing to me. You guys don't know who Steve Mead is. You're crazy. And if you think he's something like you've heard on the Internet, you guys are going to be really wrong because every single time I've ever met him, he's done things like this. That means a lot. Steve's a good guy. So I, uh, I hope I can start passing it on like he does. But uh, we got one of those. And I got to use it the other day for the first time, and I'm, I uh, was pretty humbled by that. So uh, the reason why I came to this was uh, we'll also do some videos on tuning amps. So um, we'll have this nice 3.5K in here. We can go ahead and uh, we'll run the DD1 on it and we'll run the CC1 on it and kind of do demonstrations. And I know these tools are a little bit difficult to afford for some people, and that's why it was like kind of a big deal for me to get it from Steve like that because um, that saves a lot. But I've gotten to the point where I end up doing so much of this stuff that I kind of need these tools and tell you what, you guys think it's worthless or I can just tune it the way I always tune it, but these tools make it 100 times easier, and you'd be surprised. I was not always sold on the whole, like, wow, everything sounds better thing, but it's true. And uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to, like, share that little story with you guys because I don't – Steve and I even talked about uh, – some of the haters out there, and they exist, and I get them too. Um, I try to not feed into them, but it does 
does get to you sometimes. And people, generally with me, it's like, uh, why would you waste all that money on a piece of shit Jeep or uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, you guys know what haters are. And uh, Steve and I had talked about it a little bit. And, uh, you know, he's on the same page as all of us. It's just a matter of uh, trying to not get in the heat of the moment and bicker with people. And uh, turns out Steve's a really cool guy, guys. And I'm not being a fanboy over here. I'm just giving you the truth because, you know, that's what we got to do. We got to be good to people. And that's what being a base head's about. So enough with that. <clears throat> Let's uh, answer some questions while you got a few people here still. <clears throat> We're going on the 40 minute mark, so my voice is getting a little bit dried out from all the smoker out here. But uh, I might get some water. <clears throat> so we had some questions a while back. I don't know who's still on here who asked these questions, but I guess I'll keep getting in there. How much does the system weigh? That's a good question because I don't actually know. My guess would be, uh, just because I know the vehicle, the vehicle's stock is about 3,300 pounds. <clears throat> I took out some things, I had a lot of things back. Got bigger tires, blah, blah, blah. I think the whole car is about 5,500 pounds. It'd be my guess. So that means the system's probably getting onto the 2,000 pound mark, somewhere in there. Uh, and then other accessories. So we're probably past 2,000 pounds in system and then a few extra 100 pounds and just other accessories and a full gas tank or something. That's kind of my guess on that one. Uh, I didn't briefly mention the suspension earlier. Um, we did a bastard pack on this, so when it, there's additional leaf springs now built in, we did that out of a Chevy Blazer and just kept stacking them until we liked the, the height, which was a pain because you gotta, if you don't have enough height, then you gotta add another leaf in there, which means you gotta pull the leaf pack back out. So that was a long endeavor, but basically I got it to where now the thing sits pretty much level. Um, with a two inch lift overall after the equipment's in there. And if the thing's empty, it's gonna sit super high because there's so much spring on it. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing. And you'll be able to see them. Uh, there's the pack, dark though. But uh, basically this is the stock master leaf. And then I pretty much got rid of all the Jeep leaves because the Jeep leaves are pretty squishy. And uh, we added in these thicker blazer slash Astro van ones. Um, and then additionally, I have uh, the Gabriel Hijacker air shocks. Um, and here are the valves under the bumper. So I can do fine tune adjustments. Uh, typically I leave them around 150 pounds. Um, that adds a little bit of it, a little bit of cushion when I'm driving and uh, keeps the vehicle from rolling a little more uh, when you're cornering. Uh, um, yeah, thanks. The new back end looks pretty cool, I think. A lot of work. Um, how many square inches of port and how many cubes? Um, that's a good question because I raised the subs and it changed. So I think now we're at around nine cubic foot. No, we're about nine. And, what is it? I think we're at nine and three quarters cubic feet rear and we're at 13 front somewhere in there it's like something like that um my goal is to bring it closer to one to one ratio um port area is pretty small um i don't exactly know what the two six inch ports end up at but it's roughly uh roughly six square inches of port area per cubic foot of the rear chamber and this front port is pretty small it's like uh around 16 inches per cubic foot of the front chamber. I don't remember the exact numbers of it now since it's kind of a funky shape, but I do remember it was somewhere around like 250 square inches or whatever that equates to you guys could do on a calculator or something. Um, so it's a little bit on the small side. This whole thing was on the small side and I totally learned with Shane's that being on the big side helped a lot. So if I ever rebuild this, we're gonna definitely utilize some more space because there's a lot of wasted room in this uh, build because <clears throat> originally if you guys remember it was a uh, ported uh, flat wall and uh, I kind of had to force a lot of speakers into a smaller 
shell that was existing. Boom, 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 boom. Where did you learn how to do cardio on this extreme level installs? Um, I would say it's just having a passion for the hobby. Um, I got originally into it when I was about 15 and I had just gotten the Jeep here. Um, it was it was in sad shape when I had first bought it, but um, I was at an auto zone buying some bullshit for this thing. I don't know, I was a kid, probably like fuses and things or whatever car care products. And I was in the store and someone had rolled up to the front of the store and it was just shaking everything off the shelves. And I was like, what the heck is that? And I, you know, I never really knew about cardio that much. And uh, then it, it just caught my attention and I was like, that's cool. For some, some somehow I ended up with a 12, uh, MTX Thunder 8000 on a 200 watt amp uh, was my first setup. And uh, I used to play around with that and uh, do things like put it right behind the seat so you could feel it shaking the seat, you know, kind of all that stupid kid stuff. So I played around a lot. And uh, from there, I ended up getting a hold of the two Fosgate 12s that you guys may remember from the beginning of this channel. And I was pretty young at the time. Um, that went through a few boxes, and we did a fourth order that we kept in here for a while. And then by the end of that build, I had learned quite a bit. Um, I was buying Sky High stuff. I was still running Soundstream, which I don't like that brand, by the way. <laughs> um, no hating, but uh, those amps are not nice to me. But I mean, so I was still buying cheap things and running CCA wire and all that. Um, and then uh, I met people, uh, mainly like Frankie Smith um, at Autorama and turned out he was a local and I had just started going to college by then. And uh, ended up living with him for a few years. So he's a big uh, SPL competitor guy out here in the West with his blazer. And uh, he kind of showed me the way a little bit and got me two SoundCubed HTC 318s that I had put into a no-wall box. And that thing was insane. I had it on my first 3.5K, the one you guys just saw in the trunk, um, which I had got because he had convinced me to buy that amp. And I am so grateful because I will never, I will never buy a cheap amp again because it's never worth it. Um, and that box, so 218's no wall was like ripping the roof open. I mean, you can still see that crack. That's not from my wall. That was from the no wall and that it was destroying the B pillar. It was destroying everything and ripping. It was destroying the whole car. The hatch was trying to break out. And you hear those guys saying, I blew out my back window stories. That kind of actually happened almost. Um, it actually broke the uh, window seal out and the window was flopping. So, I mean, it kind of blew the window out. It was a fun system. It was doing like 152s. And by that point, I was super excited about having stereos. And it came down to like, you know, if I keep playing these 18s, I'm going to destroy the car. So I think I'm just going to wall it. Might as well. And then since then, we've been walled, and I've gotten more experience, and I've met more people, and I've done more competition, and I've gotten that thirst many times for going after SPL, and then that thirst to go after demos, and did them both at the same time to where I'd be switching systems back and forth all day long, just trying to do the best of both worlds, and uh, it was just fun. And now it's now it's like uh, an old friend kind of thing. Like I just uh, I come to it when I feel like working on something. And, uh, you know, it's not like I go out and cram this thing every day anymore. It sits most of the time. Um, but uh, that's kind of audio, and I've learned as I've gone. So I think I missed a bunch of questions because I get into rambling mode. But um, uh, I'm not really able to do too many sales. We don't – I mean, I don't sell a lot on the website. Um, I mean, I always offer free shipping and no tax on any order. And if you guys buy DC from me, I'll do free box designs. Um, I don't really have that. I don't sell enough to be able to do a discount much. Um, so it's kind of hard. So if you guys want some good Black Friday deals, um, maybe Sky High Cardio is your best bet. Um, 1 to 1 1.5 ratio. I have... 
I like my one to one ratio sixth. Um, I haven't tried to ratio much past one to one and a quarter. With two to one. What kind of cash flow system like this run? All right, guys, I'll try you straight up. <clears throat> if you, anybody wants to buy the Jeep as it sits, um, I would let it go for 30000 So, I don't know. Everybody tells me it's a $500 Jeep. I think the Jeep probably is worth more like three. It runs perfect. It's got everything gone through. It's got paint. So then you could say the system's probably like twenty to $25,000. Somewhere in there. And it obviously it took a lot of time to get it there. But uh, that's where I would price it. And you might say I'm crazy, but I I don't really want to sell it, so I don't care. <clears throat> um, yeah, I can't wait to see you in Vegas. Yeah, I can't wait to be in Vegas. We're still figuring out where to stay because uh, I might do like an Airbnb or something. Problems with those all work three times in two years for my 350. I've never had a problem with these alternators whatsoever. And it's been, we're going on the full first year, I think, now. So, I got buddy running exercise to come in. Hey, Ray, doing a great job. Keep it up. Thank you. Much love from Bottom Line Audio. Heck yeah. Still need to get together. Yeah, we can try to do that. I completely get bogged down very often. I try to do things and it just, I I try to meet people and help people and I got so much going on all the time too. And I, this Jeep could have been done so much faster if I had just had more time too. Um, I got to finish a box design for my buddy Nash in Canada tonight. Um, he's a good guy. I don't know if he's watching right now, but shout out to Nash. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, what's the craziest thing you tried and worked? Uh, I guess audio related would be. Shoot, you're saying the craziest thing that like made gains. I guess is what you're asking. Um, craziest thing that made gains. I don't really know what the craziest thing that made gains. You know, the craziest thing I think that made gains was. Uh. Probably all the spray foaming I did in the roof of this thing when I was testing it for SPL because I did a few years of SPL chasing, no wall style in this. Um, and that was crazy because it made such a mess because I overdid the spray foam. Um, other crazy things to gain SPL um, generally involve box design. Um, when I was doing my trunk build last year, I shouldn't even share this because if I go back after it, but uh, right, I had the 215 set up and let's say this was the middle of the box. I had a 15 here, 15 here. This could be the port. And I had an eight inch arrow port that came out of the box, kind of like a big old tube coming out. And right behind that port, like right here on the back wall of the box, I built a cone that like stuck out this way um, that, was right behind that port exit. So that cone um, gained me a half a decibel and it was just directing sound through the port. So that was kind of a crazy thing. I built it out of a, uh, like a coat hanger. <laughs> um, not like a metal coat hanger, but like uh, one of those uh, for people hanging their coats up when they come in the door, I cut the top of it off and fiberglassed onto it. So it was like a cone shape. Anyway, that was kind of a crazy thing I did to gain some some decibels there. Um, so there's all kind of crazy things. Subsonic, uh, out of curiosity. Um, well, you guys would be like, what's wrong with Ray? But I don't have my subsonic set on these amps. I have it all the way down because I practically can play anything full tilt um, down to like 18. I don't even play songs below 18 in this car, so I never even worry about it. So I have the subsonic wide open. There's no filter going on. Um, obviously, you set it in other builds, but I'm always so confident with this that I don't ever play it. That's your baby. You can't sell it. I know I can't sell it, but if somebody walked up to me with 30 grand, I'd be like, I'm going to pay my school off right now. 
I'll build a new one. But uh, how'd you build the doors? Is that wood? Yes, it's real wood. Well, this is that Baltic birch I just showed you. Uh, well, uh, at the beginning of the video. The stuff that this 10 inch box is made out of right here. Okay. Bobby Gately did these. Well, I helped him a little bit, but he did these at his shop in Sacramento. This is the same stuff. And he stacked it up a couple times and then started working it. So he's got some cool tools that do that shaping. <clears throat> uh, these are internally regulated alternators. So uh, they're both self excite. I've kind of just bypassed the entire vehicle's charging stuff. So I don't plug them in. So that's why there's nothing plugged in. The alternator sees what's going on, kicks on, kicks off. Sometimes it's a little slow response, so you could be wailing on it and then shut the system off and uh, you'll spike voltage real quick, which never seems to be a problem, but it's a thing. So that's something I have to watch. Um, am I gonna run lithium? I don't know, probably not this year though. Uh, I'm not completely sold on lithium. And a lot of people are gonna be like, well, I'm a, you're a dummy if you don't like lithium, but it's not that I don't like it, it's just that uh, I, I found that these AGMs are super dependable. I've always had a lot, I've always uh, never had alternators. Always had to rely on batteries. And for years, it was always the AGMs that did it through for me. I uh, would demo all day long on a stock alternator on that bank of batteries that's back there right now. And uh, you know, they just did the work. So I, I don't know how lithium would act with no alternator. So that's just all. That's all that I wonder on that. Um, plus lithium's like expensive. <laughs> ground loop, any ground loop issues? Uh, like the alternator wine, I guess. Yes, this had tons of alternator wine, like tons. So that's why earlier I showed you guys I wired the, uh, the head unit power and ground to the back battery bank and that helped eliminate a lot of that. And the other thing I did was I uh, I kind of insulated the head unit from the dash so it wasn't grounding through the case. I noticed if the case would touch anything on the dash that it would start making more of a whining noise. So that was kind of weird. <clears throat> um, I still have to fight it a little bit, you know. I'll wake your system up, but you're right about dependability. It'll wake your system up, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I know lithium's the shit, honestly, right now. It's getting to be the the thing. It just, I don't know. I like to do these deathmatch rounds where it's five minutes of just full tilt to where you've got so much current pulling that your alternators aren't going to do it anymore. If your belt starts squealing, you're pretty much losing out on that. Um, and the last thing you've got to rely on is the battery. And if you've gone five minutes without feeding the lithiums, my fear is that the lithiums aren't happy about that. Um, AGMs are just kind of like, keep coming, man. I'll go until I'm dead, you know? That, I mean, unless I'm wrong about my thoughts on lithium, it seems like lithium's like, you wouldn't feel as comfortable with the car off and playing it as, as you would with the AGM. Cause if the AGM's gonna go low, it's, I mean, you could hurt, hurt the battery, but um, I don't know, I'm afraid of lithium, honestly, I think. And I don't know enough about it, so you guys may correct me on some of the things I'm thinking. I'm no expert on lithium, and I won't ever tell you that I am. Uh, people ask me all the time, and I don't know anything about it. Um, I just know that the AGMs are dependable, and I'm fine with sticking with them for now. And uh, the Jeep moves it around just fine. It's not, like, crazy. So I know AGM, and I trust it. It's heavy, and that's the downside. It takes up room, so... But this is a driver. I will not trailer this vehicle whatsoever. And uh, if I if that means I have to go lithium at some point, then it'll probably happen. But how's your system react to the different outside temperature? Um, a cold day like today right now. It's like well, California's cold is not your back east kind of cold, but it's about fifty degrees out, and uh, equipment loves that. I mean, the subs are happy. Equipment's happy, especially now that I have my venting system in the back and can draw the hot air out of the vehicle. Um, when it's warm outside, it definitely shows because uh, I'll lose up to a decibel 
in scores and uh, equipment's going in to protect a lot faster. You know, you can't demo as long. If it's like 90 degrees plus outside, this thing like is not happy, um, I've found. Um, you just can't keep anything cool. It just doesn't sound as good. I don't know. Um, and then uh, hot temperatures outside usually lead to breaking windshields. So temperature definitely is a big deal. I think this thing probably the happiest, the happiest it's ever been probably is around 70 degrees outside. If it's 70 and it's a nice, nice sunny day and you're just doing your thing, man, it's so fun to take this out. So uh, how's the sound quality? Um, I get so much shit over this over YouTube because it's YouTube. And everybody's like, that sounds like shit, you know? But in real life, this thing is absolutely amazing it plays everything you don't get any funky noises um well okay i get some port noise now so i could say that's probably the only thing that's bugging the system as far as sound quality all all around these speakers keep up they're very clear um very direct the subs are very clear and direct i mean it's like it's loud bass and it doesn't sound bad i mean i can play Within the same song, I can go from, you know, 30 hertz to 60 hertz, down to 25 hertz to 45 hertz, and it's just, they hang along, they do peak, um, they have their peaks depending on what door is open, you know, you get that loud note. It's not a super flat response all the time, but, uh, I mean, it's nothing like you guys see on YouTube. Um, you, you know, oh, let's knock these rims over. Sorry about that. These are my shitty old rims off the Civic. I just got replaced, and they're going to the trash. I'm gonna stop running into those. Okay, back to what we were talking about. The uh, the YouTube does no justice. So if you guys, you know, you guys record anything with a phone camera, you're never gonna get an idea. And I have viral. You might have seen the viral video on Facebook of this thing about a year ago. It's like five million views. Every single comment's like, that sounds like shit. Like, what's the point in that? Because people who don't understand cardio don't understand that cardio doesn't sound good on camera. So this thing has been gone through. And, I mean, I wouldn't take it anywhere if it didn't sound good. That's what I'm about. So, um, Yeah, that was hella embarrassing right there. <laughs> Knock them rims over. Um, how much one of those speakers built and how much hold watts? Uh, these are rated 2000 watts and they're like $500 sub, something like that. Jeff doesn't build them a lot though. So that's why I'm probably going to DC soon. And I just got the notification that my phone's at 10%. So we're going to start wrapping this up. We're an hour into it. So I'll get some of the last questions going and then we'll uh, wrap it up for tonight. I'm going to try to do an actual video upload soon. Um, since I've been dropping the ball on you guys, but we did just pass 14,000 subscribers, so that's pretty cool. So I appreciate that. Is the 318 set up ladder in the Jeep, the other Jeep? Uh, his is louder at low frequencies, because that's what he wanted. He wanted that thing to dominate like 20 hertz and below, and that's exactly what it did. Um, that thing is absolutely windy. It is just crazy. It, it makes mine look a little sad sometimes. Mine is louder overall on the whole bandwidth, but his definitely drives hard at that low frequency stuff. He does 155s at 20 hertz. Um, his is a very flat response as well. His sounds very nice. His doors are the old doors I had with the McLarens, so he doesn't have as much quality as far as uh, mids and highs, but it sounds all right. Um, but like, you know, on videos, Definitely a different sound than what you're going to get in real life. In real life, that thing is a very smooth, very windy setup. It uh, doesn't hurt you very much. It's just enjoyable. So that one, that one's pretty fun. Um, ZV5. All right. No, no, no. No no sundown in the Jeep. Sorry, guys. I, I'm not hating sundown, but I don't run sundown. DC. We're going to do ZV level fives. I mean, <laughs> DC level fives. No ZV, sorry. I'm totally DC in here, and that is just what I'm going to do. So we're going to do some level 512s in here. It's going to be awesome. So that'll come. 
Thanks for the Q&A. Yeah, you guys are welcome. I don't know if it's boring or not. My voice is starting to get kind of messed up because it's smoky and I've been talking. But uh, I try to answer you guys. That's why I did another live this week because I know I've, uh, you know, I miss it sometimes. Solid wood versus plastic and fiberglass door panels. Going to be doing too. Dude, these solid wood... These solid wood panels are the strongest panels I've ever seen because they're solid. I mean, that's there's no emptiness inside them other than where the speakers are. Um, they actually did a lot to reinforce the door, and I think they are part of the reason why the door decided to break in other places now. So it's like I think everything above the wood's kind of weak, and then the wood helps. So, <clears throat> um, But that's totally the look you're going for. These are expensive because of how hard they are to make. Nothing wrong with fiberglass, but these definitely add reinforcement. Sadly, they knock me out of the class that I'm normally in because they're considered reinforcing. So that kind of sucks. So now I'm in like ultimate class and all that. All right, I would do DC level 6 in here, except they don't make level 6 12s. I could get level 6 12s if I wanted because it can be done, but there's no reason to put a 4-inch coil on a 12 in my opinion. Uh, it is way too much coil for the size of the cone. Um, and you lose so much efficiency that way, and you lose cone area that way. And so the level 5, in my opinion, is a good place to stop for DC making 12s um, because you're only using a 3.5 inch coil. Let's see, we're back. Okay, got another call. Gives you that happy medium of having some power handling yet not being crazy too big for the cone itself. You know, it's not a crazy large coil. Sounds solid. Yeah, it does sound solid, doesn't it? I tap it and I'm like, I'm not even hearing anything other than my broke door here. <clears throat> I like it too when you do the q and teaches you a lot. Oh, that's good. I mean, it's hard to do it's hard to like answer perfectly without like scripting something, and that's why I should get around to more videos. But that's why I'm excited, guys. If you if you haven't noticed or you weren't here about playing with this box and the sub, we're going to play with it. Um, so stay tuned because we're going to get to do that. I think my phone's getting ready to die, so we're going to give it like the last little goodbye here. We got let's see, we'll be at 70 minutes in three minutes, so maybe I'll try to make it to the 70 mark. Oh uh, yeah, the doors. Uh, the door skins flex regardless, but it was reduced a lot with the wood. Up here, is, yeah, it's destroying the car. Um, I, I mean, literally, the time I was outside the day, which was kind of a bad idea because of smoke, this occurred within a half hour. It was not there this morning, so that sucks. So he's still a man in Sacramento. Well, I go to Sacramento a lot. I live north of Sacramento a little bit. But uh, I'll be down there on the 24th for a show. Uh, we're doing a show. Demo Wars is what they're calling it. So that'll be cool. Anyway, we're getting close to the end here, guys. I'm about losing my phone. Um, but I figure this is a pretty long video. I had a little time tonight. Kind of been taking it easy today. I didn't feel so good. Um, so we just kind of cleaned up the Jeep. I think I'm going to take it home tonight and then have to get the Civic home somehow. <clears throat> but, uh... All right, I said a Sundown's equivalent to a P2. I'd, uh, I would say the Sundown's a lot better than the P2, honestly. <laughs> uh, but... I wasn't I wasn't trying to make them the same sub. I was trying to uh, just say those would be the subs that you might end up putting in a box like this. That's kind of what I was trying to say, at least. Um, it's laminate one inch on those doors. Uh, weight of the Jeep, I think I said it earlier, was 5,500 pounds, thereabouts. I've never actually officially weighed it, but uh, that's my guess. So, but yeah, um... Stay tuned for these uh, upcoming videos. I'll have some videos on the Jeep. Obviously, we're going to demo it at some point when the smoke clears uh, from these fires. Um, and then we're going to do uh, some videos on this little box and the badass DC XL10 I'm getting for it. So 
Um, it's time to let you guys go, I think. I'm about to lose the phone because I never seem to charge my phone before doing videos. But we got a long video, so. Um, 2,000 watt amp. If it's a real 2,000 watt amp, 2,000 watt sub. If it's not a real 2,000 watt amp, then uh, still probably get a 2,000 watt sub. <laughs> um, and then uh, tune the amp correctly. By the way, that guy is what you need. So, <clears throat> thank you for the compliments, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for everything. Uh, we did make that 14,000 subscriber mark. Let's get it to 15 soon, maybe before the end of the year, if we can actually get some videos uploaded. Um, I'm going to get this thing home and, uh, you know, stay safe out there. We're going to sit through these fires up here in California. Or I, I think it's a 45% containment as of today. Um, and anybody who's been affected by these fires, um, I send a prayer out to, and uh, I, I hope that you're all safe. And, uh, and uh, last thing, touching on the whole Steve Mead thing I talked about, um, be cool to each other out there. Um, if you're on Facebook and you guys don't agree on brands or you don't agree on something, um, or you want to be louder than the next guy, it's not worth the argument, guys. I see it too much anymore, and uh, it's made me want to tune away from being on social media as much. I kind of just post and leave. I don't try to do it as much. I used to get involved, and I used to be bad, too. Um, I'm, I have my opinions, but uh, be cool to each other out there. Um, audio is about getting people together, not breaking them apart. So with that being said, go enjoy it. And... Uh, you know, try not to disturb everybody. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go plug the phone in, guys. Stay tuned for some videos. We're going to do it. Like, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. Appreciate it, and we'll talk to you guys later.